What's going on guys? Welcome back. This video is actually a remake of my most recent video. It was brought to my attention through the comment section that it's possible that I had given some misinformation and the last thing I want to do is have false information out there for my viewers to take on board. So I'm redoing the video and at some point I'm going to go to the range and either scientifically prove or disprove what I said to be true. Either way, if I prove what I believe to be wrong, I'm, I'm humble, so I will gladly admit that I made a mistake, I'm human. If you do this long enough, you are gonna make some mistakes, there's no way around that. But what's important is to stay mission focused and the mission is to ensure that I give good, accurate information. And sometimes that requires you to swallow your ego and pride in every line of work, and maybe that's where we are. But either way, um, the most requested video that I'm asked to do is a video on my CCWs. I'm going to do, go over two today, the modifications that I made and why. But before we get into that, I want you to understand you have two primary concepts. The first concept is the shooter's ability to understand the fundamentals and the shooter's ability to apply it. And that means no matter what gun you pick up, you should be able to point it down range and hit a target. All right, if you can't do that, then upgrading and purchasing a more expensive gun is going to give you very, very little to no improvement, okay? On this side, we're just referring to efficiency, okay? Um, you can upgrade a barrel that's proven to be a little more accurate, okay? Maybe get a little um, smoother trigger that could help you with your accuracy and then we have your recoil management and all of your other upgrades that's going to help you deliver rounds downrange faster so that's what we're referring to about efficiency understand the baseline is when you pull the trigger your round should be hitting the target no matter what okay and if you can't do that then I would recommend not purchasing a lot of upgrades spend some money on your training okay I see people that have been shooting 25, 30 years come through my courses and it looks like buckshot at three yards and it takes five to 10 minutes to get them down to a, you know, a baseball to softball size grouping. So understand that the knowledge is out there and you do have the ability to improve to that level. The problem is you're not putting yourself around people who can get you there. And another option is you becoming what's called a teacher of self, seeking this information out and teaching yourself to be able to apply it on the range, okay? So once again, just understand that you can buy the most expensive gun out there, upgrade all your parts, and still not be able to hit the target because it has nothing to do with the performance of the gun. It has everything to do with your inability to understand how the principles work and not being able to apply them on the range. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to one of my carry guns. I ran across this platform two to three months ago at a local gun range, Apache Rifle Works, and I set on purchasing it for about a month. And what drew me back to this gun was how it felt overall. The grip and the trigger are just phenomenal. So this is the Stoger STR9 9mm. It's created by a company that is a sister company to um, Benelli Shotguns. And what I think Benelli did is, you know what, we don't make handguns, but we wanna show everybody that we do have the ability to produce a handgun that will be competitive to what's on the market. So they just threw it out there. And I can't say enough good things about this gun. <clears throat> now, I will say that I feel by looking at it, that it is a cross-platform or cross-breed between a G19, the slide, and the frame being more similar to an MMP 2.0. And by that, I mean extremely similar. All right, so I'm gonna work from the slide down, and we're just gonna talk about it. As you can see, it has front and rear serrations. These are very aggressive. Um, I like aggressive stipling. I like aggressive serrations. Um, when you're dealing with stress, your hands are sweating, or maybe your hands are really cold, um, it's important to have stuff like this that's going to help you be more overall efficient, okay, and not make any mistakes. And like I said, 
even real world operators, we make simple mistakes that could potentially cost us our lives. And that's why you got two factors, the actual training aspect, and then our gear that's going to help us be more efficient. So the reason why you, they're starting to put front serrations on is this, okay? Um, a lot of people still teach this, I do, but if we ever want to manipulate the slide, we always work behind the ejection port, either in this manner or this manner, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what we've found through scientific evidence is my hand is already in this position, so why not just rotate the gun my thumb and index finger is already in position of the serrations, clear of the barrel, clear of the ejection port. I can manipulate it and roll right back into a two-handed grip. Now, it does take a little bit of work, practice, but we can prove that that's scientifically more efficient, okay? The sights. The sights are just like standard Glock sights. They're white. I'm not too fond of them, but they work. As you can see, there's a slide cut here for a red dot optic. The benefit to this versus a price point, which we'll get to here shortly, is if you buy a just a G19, $450 to $550, depending on where you get it. And if I wanted to get a red dot, you have to buy another um, slide, or you have to send this one off, and you've got a wait period of two to three weeks, plus another $150 to $200 to get that done, okay? So this is definitely an added benefit. Your slide lock is elongated front to back, which is very helpful for a left-handed shooter. So I don't have to change hands to really manipulate it. And I have no doubt that's gonna help you as a right-handed shooter as well, if you're right-handed. The magazine release button, there's nothing fancy about that. <clears throat> I said the trigger itself is absolutely phenomenal. There's no resistance, no grit, no extra walls. It's just a very smooth pull and reset. If you get an opportunity to go to a range and rent a gun, I would recommend you seeing if they have this for rent and just taking it for a test drive. So as you can see right here in this darker area, I've reduced and stifled it myself. And I'm gonna go into why I do this on my other platform. And as you can see, I've taken some more out here. I've opened it up as well as a very light undercut. And the reason why I had to do a light undercut instead of a heavier undercut is because there's not a lot of meat here on the bottom of the trigger guard. You go too far, you're gonna make it flimsy, which becomes very unsafe. So two things I don't like about this um, gun. One, it has proprietary parts, meaning you have to contact Stoger for replacement parts from what I can tell right now. And um, there's not a lot of replacement parts out there, but I will tell you outside of changing the front sight color wise, I'm not gonna upgrade anything. As my eyes get worse, I will put a red dot optic on there to help me out for that. But I'm not gonna change the trigger out or anything. There's absolutely no reason to do that. Now, the second thing I really dislike that's kind of tied to that is when I first got this, the first thing I noticed was that white front sight. And I was like, I need to get a different sight. So I contacted Benelli. They transferred me over to the Stover department and I left a message and I have yet to return, get a return phone call and it's been about three weeks. So I'm gonna try again, but I hope the customer service is better than that. Now, with that being said, this gun is so well built. Um, as long as you take care of it like any, like we should any gun, um, I don't see any parts breaking whatsoever. That brings us to the price point. <clears throat> $289 plus tax. Okay, I can tell you what's going to happen. Once this gun really hits the market, they're going to do just like Canik did. In the beginning, Canik was $300, and now you know they've got upgraded parts and stuff, but they're up to eight to nine hundred dollars at the moment. So once they realize that this is a good gun and people are desiring it, they're gonna bump that price up, you know, two to three times like it was nothing and not even blink an eye. So I would definitely go ahead and get one if uh, you have an opportunity to. It's really good for someone who's on a budget. Right. Which brings me to 
probably one of my favorite builds that I've ever done, okay? This is a Gen 3 G19, fully custom. And what I've done, I've spent about six to eight hours actually measuring my hand and the grip and the reduction to ensure I had it exactly where I wanted to. So I know that sounds a little excessive, but I wanted a platform that was just, that just molded to my body. And this does that, okay? So again, I'm gonna start at the slide. You can see that it's got front and rear serrations. And this slide I got from, I believe, Brownell's website. I don't recall what model it is, but I like it overall. It's got a slide cut on the top. I don't run a ported barrel. Reason being, CCW gun, you're in a vehicle around somebody else, it can add the gases will actually put somebody's eyeballs out, all right? The sights I'm running completely blacked out front and rear. Um, I built this gun about two and a half years ago and I actually sold it and I just got it back, fortunately. So I, when I go to the range and use it under different lighting conditions, um, there's a possibility that I might have to change this out, um, the front side out to ensure that there's some type of contrast. We'll have to see. RMR1 MOA. <clears throat> All of the internal parts are either nickel plated or polished chrome, okay? Slide lock, it's elongated and it's protruding. I don't remember what company it is. I just found it online, I tried it, and I really like it. So the barrel, I believe, is Zafari Precision or Zafari Precision. I've used them for a couple years. Really good company, good customer service. The products are really good from my experience so far and really great price points. So this barrel is a spiral fluted, all right? Outside of looks, any type of fluting is just for a rate, uh, weight reduction, all right? As you can see on the front, I have a crown barrel, which means it's tapered. And this is where I believe I've made my um, verbal mistake. So I won't go into detail. But what a crowning does, what the world believes a crowning does is two things. One, it helps with accuracy. And two, it protects the surface of the um, barrel. So if I make a mistake and I jam the barrel or drop it and I ding the surface of the barrel, um, it's going to affect the accuracy. So that's what the world believes. I do believe that. I believe that there's one more added thing to it, but again, I have to go and prove it. So we'll see. I've got a Agency Arms drop-in trigger, an Agency Arms magazine well bevel. And if you look right here, you'll see a beaver tail, okay? When you purchase a Glock, it comes with three back straps with extended beaver tails and they're different thicknesses, okay? Since I measured all of this to fit my hand perfectly, when I put this back strap on, it created a thicker, um, section from front to back and I didn't want that. So what I did was I took a razor blade and right below the logo on that back strap or beaver tail, I cut it and then I tapered it with a Dremel. I took some um, Gorilla Glue epoxy with the two components you mix and it's a hardener. All right, took the slide off, glued it, zip tied it to ensure that it was going to make a really good bond. About 48 hours I came in, I did the reduction and then the stipling, okay? As you can see, I took the um, finger grooves out. <clears throat> for me, for whatever reason, the finger grooves were more of a hindrance. I think because I'm a perfectionist and I couldn't get the grip that I wanted or the feel, um, it caused me some issues, so that's why I took them out. Again, just like the Stover, I open this up a little bit, and what this does is it allows you to move your hands a little more freely to adjust your grip. Right. I've got another undercut, and then this 45 degree cut here really has no purpose. I just thought it looked cool, uh, just my personal opinion. And if you look right here, I've reduced and stipled this area for uh, roughly at a 45 degree angle as well. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you how I'm, um, what reasons I fitted this to my hand. Okay. If you look right here, I fit it really snug, meaning I took, so 
some of the polymer away to ensure that my three fingers fit tightly between the trigger guard and the uh, magazine wheel bevel. All right. So that creates one locking point. Now my next locking point, because I have this here, the bottom of my palm and right here on the beaver tail. So I've got one locking point. Now my second locking point is from here to here. Third locking point of how I run my gun. I'm gonna take my weekend pinky. I'm gonna lay it right here in between my strong hand pinky and ring finger. And then I'm gonna run my hand roughly at a 45 degree angle. Okay, that's going to set in this undercut, okay? If I remove my hand, my strong hand, what you'll see is this index finger actually stops right at the end of the curvature of the undercut, okay? So like I said, I spent a lot of time doing this to fit my hands. All right? So now I have a third locking point, which locks it from here to here. If we come on this side, I'm going to place my palm like a puzzle piece here. And if you look, my thumb fits perfectly right here on the frame where I reduce it and stifled it as well. Okay. So what does all this do? It's no more than allowing me to be more efficient. Like I said, when we we're talking about efficiency, you two have two mechanical factors. How much can I manage the recoil, meaning how fast will my sights fall back down and get on target? And how fast can I manipulate the trigger, meaning pull and reset? And that's the two determining factors when we're referring to efficiency. Um, like I said, I can pick up any gun out there and shoot and hit the target, but it does not mean I can um, deliver more rounds faster than I can with this particular platform because it makes me more efficient due to all the modifications and upgrades that I've made on it, okay? Um, it's important to study your state laws and your county laws for a CCW. A lot of state and county laws do not allow any modifications or very few modifications to the uh, platform, your CCWs. Where I live in Texas, they don't really care. So you got to understand the more efficient I am, the higher chance of survival in a self-defense situation. I'm not trying to kill the person faster. I'm just trying to neutralize the situation faster to ensure that no one is injured. Okay. With that being said, I think, I hope the most important thing you take away from this video is understanding that all these upgrades and expensive guns are useless without understanding how to apply the fundamentals. Okay. Like I said, the first gun I've got a couple hours into the stipling and the cost is $289 plus tax. The custom G19, I've got probably 10 hours total in it and it runs about $2,350. Okay. I can't tell you what to do as far as where you put your money, but I will tell you to humble yourself and be realistic that if you cannot hit your target every single time you pull the trigger under very controlled and relaxed conditions, then spend some more time on your fundamentals. I won't tell you not to upgrade some parts, but just don't go overboard. I hope you guys like the video. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and as always, have a great day and God bless.